Great. Uh, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining in this session. I'm joining from the beautiful Switzerland, and I'm excited to talk to you about uh, VS Code. Uh, so VS Code can be thought as uh, like the UI for the HPC because it has a lot of cool stuff that you can use. And uh, also, it, it doesn't necessarily should be VS Code. We are talking about VS Code because it's uh, like an open source software that you can use. It's based on VS Codium, I guess. It's maintained by Microsoft, but the, the core and the kernel is open source. So, it, so you can use also uh, other IDEs if you want, like PyCharm or anything. And the instructions should be similar. But if you had any problems, feel free to come to Garage and we can help you and like walk you through it. So the main idea behind using an IDE is uh, the, the idea about remote development versus local development. So when we are talking about developing your project, you can either develop whole, like all the project on your local machine and then transfer the whole thing on the cluster that you want to do all the calculation and run your job and see the and see the results. Or you can do also your programming and project development on the cluster. The benefit would be uh, you don't have to go through like the git and pull and push and maintaining the project because all the things are on the cluster. And uh, also if you are doing remotely, you don't have to go with like a nano or Veeam or any IDE that you're not comfortable with. So you are using your local IDE on your local machine, but every calculation that you are running is running on the cluster. Uh, so here, as you can see, I have the, the, the main page of VS Code. And we the, the first thing that we have to do to get connected to the HPC, in this case, Triton, to start the, the, the development is to install the remote SSH plugin. It should usually come with the VS Code if you install it and download it from the official pages. But if it's not, you can easily go to the App Store and search for like SSH remote or something similar um, and install the, the SSH plugin. Uh, as you can see, I already have installed it and uh, I don't have like any el anything else to do for here. Uh, so uh, if, when you install the SSH remote plugin in VS Code, you will see this blue button added here. So if you have it already there, uh, you don't have to install any other plugin. Uh, so this means that uh, the plugin is installed. And if I go and click here, it would start asking me which cost that I want to get connected to. So if I go ahead and uh, select like, I want to get connected this window to the host. You can see all of the configuration that I have in my uh, SSH config file that you have been seeing previously. Uh, you can, of course, go ahead and uh, edit the uh, the config here. Uh, it would it would know probably all of the configs that you have, but if if it doesn't, you can add it in the settings that that the configs that you uh, added in other default other than the default directories. So for example, you can see all I have all of the configs here. So let me go ahead and try to get connected to Triton. Because I'm all on all those network, I can get easily get connected to Triton. And um, when this bl blue button would say Triton, the host name that I configured manually, uh, it means that I get connected to Triton. So if I go ahead and open the terminal here, you can go about with host name, you can see I'm I'm on already on the Triton. Right. Uh, so the yes. cool thing about yeah, no, I, I would want to like uh, quickly um, like go go well, maybe go go over some some steps. So mm -hmm. so basically, like you see the window over here, like the um, IDE is it's running on your own machine, right? Like in your laptop, like the windowing system. But what is what is running on the Triton side in this case uh, in the login for? What's what's uh, happened? What happens when the connection is made? Uh, so the terminal is get connected with via SSH, and we uh, there is an instant running on the login node called VS Code Server, and my local IDE and the VS Code Server are talking to each to each other through the SSH tunnel. So every command mm -hmm. that I put here, it would go through the like the the tunnel to to the cluster to Triton, and the result would be coming back from the tunnel, mm -hmm. and I can see it here locally on my so machine. So I, I really wanted to emphasize this point because um, the, the important thing to notice here is that even though the window now is running on Hossein's computer, the 
whatever he is executing will be executed in that remote machine. So that also means that if you are going to, let's say, execute code or something like that, it will get mm -hmm. executed there. Uh, yeah. And tomorrow we'll be talk about more about the queue system, but uh, how how we can use that. But uh, the login node that we share have a, is shared among all the users. So remember that whenever you're running something, for example, through the terminal, or if you're running code right now, it will uh, now it would execute it on the login node. So it would be sharing the resources among al multiple users. So you shouldn't necessarily uh, run something that uh, requires huge amounts of resources using, for example, exactly. this terminal. Yeah. Um, so uh, let me like show uh, like some other cool stuff first, and then go uh, on on the step on like what to be aware of, and maybe like on like how to run the code and uh, like these kind of stuff that Simo is mentioning. Uh, so as you can see, I have my terminal here, so I don't have to use like any other terminal. I also can go ahead and like open a folder, for example. It would like see my home folder, or I can go, for example, to a scratch and then my working directory over there and like just open my pro like any other project that I have. For example, like another project, let's open the uh like like this one. Um would you would you recommend opening the whole uh folder or only just a subfolder of the of the whole work directory? Yeah, good question. So uh like at the moment like the, we have uh, two known issues with the VS Code that you have to be aware of. The first thing is because this file explorer that you can see here, it would keep track of all of the files on the cluster. Uh, so if I create a new file in another window, another terminal, or on the, uh, open on demand, it would uh, inst almost instantly appear here as well. So it's trying to keep track of all of the file changes. So if the folder that you are, you are, you are opening is too large with a lot of files, it would try to keep track of thousands of files and it would run an instant that is running 100% or 200% of your allowed CPU allocation on the login node. Uh, and the, the, it's bad because the, the login node is a share, is a share uh, resource that we are sharing with all of the researchers. So the main recommendation is to open the file or the project that, that the folder that it's only one project or it has limited number of files. For example, don't don't open a like a home folder or a folder or project that has the Conda environment in, inside specifically because the Conda environment has like thousands or like tens of thousands of files and it would be a nightmare for the VS Code to keep track of these all of things. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so as I mentioned, you can like uh, go ahead here and like uh, create a new file or another cool thing would be you can, I don't know if you can see my desktop or not, but I can like easily uh, drag and drop. So upload a file from my local machine. It is an open AI logo from my desktop. I can easily upload it to this, uh, to this project. As you can see, it's getting uploaded and now it's here. And I can also go ahead and download it, but I can the the drag the drag and drop doesn't work for downloading, so you have to like right click and go with download. And the cool thing is is it understands the hierarchy and the folder hierarchy. So if there is a folder here, and I go and download it, it would create a folder on my local machine and all the files inside. Uh, yeah, you can also uh, use this VS Code for Jupyter Notebook as well. Also, personally, as an RSC, I don't recommend it, although you can use it. But Jupyter plugin is one of the most problematic plugins because sometimes it happens that when you close the kernel or stop the kernel, it doesn't stop. So our recommendation is to not use VS Code, like not, not use Jupyter on VS Code and go to, to open on demand. But if you have to use it for some reason, just be aware that when you are closing the window of VS Code, the Jupyter kernel does not stop. So you have to go and manually stop the kernel using terminal or like after closing the, the VS code. Yeah, you can think of it like like whenever you start the, the VS code here, like what you are you're seeing is basically just like the like the shadow of the actual VS code that is running on the login node. So you're seeing like what's over there and 
whatever modifications you do to the files, whatever commands you run, whatever you start here, it will run somewhere else. It will run on the login node. So, yeah. so you're basically, uh, whenever you save a file over here, it gets automatically transferred to the login node. And when you close the, this window, it doesn't necessarily even close the server on the login node. So it can mm -hmm. stay there running uh, on the background. And this can cause problems, especially if you have like this kind of a situation that Jose mentioned that you have you are trying to sync with a certain folder that is really big, uh, mm -hmm. that has millions of files, for example. Then VS Code will keep tracking those files, even though nothing is necessarily happening or like it, like it can run on the background there. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, here in the terminal, I open the edge top to see all of the processes that I'm running. I filtered it by my username. And as you can see, like the VS Code server is running on the cluster. And if there are a lot of files or if there is a Jupyter notebook or if you are trying to run any code on the login node, uh, you would have a like a, a resource heavy a job like running on the login node, which we do not recommend. And uh, yeah, please don't do not do that. Only use the mm -hmm. login node for your development or transferring files and keeping track of these kind of things. Uh, but uh, I don't think it would be like enough time to go to remote debugging because you can do remote debugging on the actual computational nodes. But let me first show you something else. We like actually Richard developed this uh, developed this script that it would be request. An, an actual computational node for you when you are trying to access with SSH. So when you are trying to get connected to Triton on VS Code, uh, before you actually get connected, it would uh, actually get connected first, and then it would request for a computational, like a CPU job on one of the compute nodes and an and interactive uh, compute nodes that we have, and then gets connected to that specific uh, node instead of the login node. Uh, it, it's possible on our on our cluster because when you are requesting a resource and you get allocated a compute node, you can SSH to that specific node. So you can actually bypass the login node and get connected to that specific uh, compute node as well, right? Uh, so if I go ahead and uh, show you the, uh, let me go back and show you the configuration. It is in our, uh, documentation so you can uh, read more in details afterwards. But if I show you um, the configuration, you can see that we have something called like Triton VS Code. And what happens, it would try to get connected to Triton and then uh, run an a script. We, in this script, we are re requesting an interactive job for like an hour and then your VS code and your like your VS code is running locally again, but all of the computation that you are running is not on login node anymore. Is automatically automatically get connected to the compute node. So you can copy and paste this command from that documentation. So don't worry about that. So let me go ahead and show you this one then at the moment. Yeah. So, so, so it, mm -hmm. with this command, uh, what Hosan is doing that when he's making the connection, the VS code will make take an SSH connection to the login node. It will ask for a comp like a re like a job from from the queue system the job gets running in the a, in in some compute node and then it will uh, start running on there uh, so it might take it might time out if there's like a uh, if the job doesn't get allocated properly immediately yeah but let's uh, see it if got it works. on time out let's see yeah Give me a second. Let me see. If, uh, let me try again. Yeah, it got timed out. Let me try mm, to get. There might be some. One more time. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see also the configuration one once one more time. And so this uh, this basically using this will fix the problem where like uh, you have a situation uh, where. Um, yeah, it will fix a situation where you you run something very like if you want to run something heavier in the uh, so you want the VS Code session to get a bit more resources. So yeah, now uh, exactly. Hossein has this connected. 
So yeah, so... now it gets connected. I added the partition yeah. and uh, like he, we have this. If you go ahead in terminal and go with the Slurm P, you can see that we have this interactive partition, which is for these short jobs that you want to do some computational tasks, like for maybe for debugging or doing a small computation and see the results before actually submitting a job, as uh, we were like talking in the last session. Uh, and now. I asked in the script that I want this interactive session explicitly. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I go ahead and go with host name, you can see instead of the login node, I'm now get connected to one of the compute nodes. So now it's okay to maybe run a code or try to debug it here mm -hmm. because it's not running on the login node anymore. Also, a VS Code server is still running on, on the login node, but all of the computation is not running on them. In the, on the login node, and it's actually running on one of the compute nodes. So the tunnel mm -hmm. is going from the compute nodes to login node, and then from login node to my local machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so this is this is very useful if you have a situation where let let's say you want to interactively check uh, load like a, or run like a let's say Python interpreter, and you want to load like a really big memory. Like a really big, uh, let's say, not a pandas dataset or something into memory, and you cannot do it on the login node, but you would still want to do it interactively. You could do it with this. You can also use the Jupyter if you so inclined. But if you want to use VS Code, you could do it like this. So, but but these <laughs> are like because you are now working in a reservation. This will be you will have only like a certain time to work. So this is like in a sense that if the if the normal connection to the login node is something that you can like, like keep open and keep working throughout the day, this would be like, okay, I want to now do something very heavy for very short time. Like, like for an hour, I want to debug this more, this problem that requires me to have a bit more resources interactively. Then this would be like, you basically upgrade your, uh, uh, your plan for a second. So, so if you, let's say, you buy uh you would use like a streaming service to view some uh some tv show and you want to upgrade to a premium plan to watch like uh you want to watch certain show in 4D okay you upgrade your plan and then once you have watched that plan you basically downgrade immediately because you don't want to pay the additional cost so this kind of like a temporary increase in resources by running it in the compute uh, node itself Exactly. Uh, but the good thing is, uh, like, uh, we had this conversation back and forth to, like, which way to recommend it. Like, if you get connected to login node, you can keep your VS Code or any IDE open for the whole day or whole of, or, or week, actually, if your connection is stable. But at the same time, it happens to people that they kind of forgot that they're not running on the login node and do some a small computation to see if their code is working correct or not. So if you are uh like it's your first connection or if you are new to this, I would personally recommend to ask for an interactive session because if you forgot and you run something, it would be uh, okay because it's running on the one of the compute nodes. And also in the interactive sessions, it's okay to run the Jupyter notebook as well because in the end, when the resources like the time the, the time limit has been rich rich the, the 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 job has it would be killed by the system so and uh, no pro, like the, the process would not be like a still living there and like using a lot of resources uh mm -hmm. so yeah if you want to use jupyter notebook go with the interactive mm -hmm. uh, connection yeah so so uh, mm -hmm. yeah so so but but for the like like what 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 is the main thing to basically i would say gather is that it's quite easy to, to use VS Code to connect to any any SSH capable like machine, so you can basically get use the interface of the VS Code. Like if you prefer the U interface of VS Code to, let's say, using some other terminal application, uh, you can use that to to connect there, and you can do like whatever text editing you want to do. But remember that whenever you're actually like executing code or whatever, it's not your computer that. But carries the load. It's somebody else that that has to do the heavy lifting, and and just be mindful of that, or remember that that is the case. Uh, like that is that is the most important thing about the 
Uh, and also whatever plugins you have installed. Like if you install plugins that, like, I don't know, color each of your words differently, like the coloring plugins and whatever, they will also run on the remote system. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't think we have the the time to go to do the remote debugging. Also, again, you can go ahead and request for an interactive session. And if I now go ahead and run and use the actual debugging tools that we have available in the VS Code, it's running and debugging in the compute node. But there are other ways that you can actually re request a job and then try to debug your ongoing job and see what's happening there. But I don't think uh, we have time for now, right? Because it's only a couple of minutes. Uh, although we did a course a couple of months ago on that. So maybe it would be nice to send the course link to the participants. So if they're interested, they can go ahead and watch it. Or you can, of course, come to Garage and ask about um, remote de debugging in, in more details if you're interested. Yes, thanks. So I think we need to go to the 